It's the largest update from Adobe in a long time. We have three zero days being actively exploited from Microsoft. And and, and yeah, an exchange patch too. It's, it's the patch report for November. Let's do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patch Report for November 2023. I am your host, Dustin Childs, head of Thread and Virtus here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our chief patch wrangler. We got a lot to talk about this month, uh, especially when it comes to Adobe, because Adobe had a gigantic release, 14 bulletins addressing 76 TVEs. A couple of those might be duplicates, but it's a whole lot, folks. I mean, when you go through it, and really the, the biggest one is going to be Acrobat and Reader because of course that has 17 CVEs in it. And of course, PDFs are so often used in phishing attacks. So definitely make sure that is your first. If you are using Cold Fusion, you've got three critical rated CVEs in that as well. Uh, so if you're using Cold Fusion, it's getting a little long in the tooth. Maybe consider upgrading to something a little more modern. Maybe just consider it. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying, you know, think, start thinking about that. Uh, but everything else in Adobe, uh, none of this is under active attack. All of this is priority three from Adobe. None of it's publicly known. So there's a ton of stuff, but it's not super high priority stuff. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Moving on to the Microsoft stuff, we've got a total of 78 patches. Uh, about 20 of those are old uh, from, or older, I should say, earlier this month in Chromium that go into Edge. Let's talk about the three that are under active exploit. <clears throat> the first is desktop Windows Manager, the Windows Desktop Manager, right? DWM. Uh, that is a privilege escalation that is under active attack. Privilege escalations usually get combined with some sort of code execution bug so that they can take over a whole system uh, because normally you have to be able to log on to a system and then run the specially crafted code to elevate. But if you've got a code execution bug, it can do it for you. So that's one of them. The other one is very similar, the Windows Cloud Files Mini Filter Driver. Uh, that, that's a new one to me, but apparently it's really responsible for uh, saving to cloud services, which we all do these days. So if you've got cloud stored files, you are using this uh, driver at some point. And again, privilege escalation. The third one that's under active attack is really interesting to me. It's a smart screen security feature bypass. And what it is, is it allows attackers to avoid prompts. Normally, if you open a malicious thing, uh, it, you're gonna get prompted by whatever to say, hey, this might be bad, maybe maybe think about that. Uh, but this security feature bypass gets around that. So this is something else that would really be used in a phishing campaign to convince users to open documents, like malicious PDFs, just say, for example, uh, without getting warning dialogues, especially or Word docs or Excel files or whatever. So definitely uh, take a look at that. Uh, really interesting there too. The final bug I wanna kind of call out is this PGM remote code execution vulnerability. And I wanna call it out because it's a 9.8 CVSS, but hang on before you freak out. Um, it really deserves that rating. If you're running PGM and uh, the message queuing service, which is not default. Now, if you are running this, you need to take this seriously because it's absolutely wormable between systems that are set up like this. The good news here is there aren't that many systems that are set up like this. So I don't really think we'll see it exploited in the wild, but just note that if you do run this, make sure you pay attention to it. So here's the full list of CVEs for November, 2023. You'll notice that two other CVEs are publicly known, but not under active attack. And of course, Microsoft gives us no indication of where they are publicly known, but uh, those aren't too serious. And we really only have two other critical ones to talk about, but I do want to make something, uh, call out something here on the table and you'll see the second little indicator. Uh, those bugs are the ones that require additional actions besides just patching it. So I know this was requested by some users. So if you look back through here and you see one of those CVEs with that little call out, that means uh, there you go. You're, you're gonna have to do a little bit more on that open management infrastructure info disclosure than just apply the patch. So definitely you wanna make sure that you're taking a close look at that uh, and really reading that bulletin. So we've got two other ones. Uh, one is an Azure command line interface, which is an info disclosure. Don't normally have critical rated info disclosure, but it could reveal plain text passwords. So it seems appropriate. Uh, the other one is a privilege escalation. 
So again, we don't normally have critical rated privilege escalations, but this could uh, allow a guest user on a guest OS or a user on a guest OS to escalate to the hypervisor. So that's a pretty severe escalation. So uh, again, looking at that, yeah. Uh, and then, okay, oh God. Oh, exchange. Okay, so it's not that the bugs are that hideous. We've got a, a, a remote code execution bug requires an, an authenticated attacker to be network adjacent. So that's bad news if you're worried about insider threats. Um, the worst news is this requires additional actions besides just deploying the patch. You have to deploy the patch and then check the link here. I'll put the link down below in the show notes as well uh, to set up the serialized data signing feature to be fully protected. Uh, the other exchange bugs this week are from the ZDI, uh, from Piotr, and they are NTLM relays. So lots of stuff to be done with Exchange again. I'm really sorry. I wish the Exchange team could just give us a give us a nice update and let it stew for a few minutes before we have to update again. I, I pray there won't be one in uh, December. Privesque bugs, nothing exciting. A lot of spoofing bugs, nothing super exciting beyond those NTLM relays in Exchange. Uh, there's security feature bypasses. There's one that's uh, for bypassing validations of Blazor server forums. Uh, I was new to this, so I included a link in case you are new to it as well. Uh, and again, the office ones that are allowing attackers to bypass protected view or to evade some of those um, some of those <coughs> prompts. Info disclosure bugs, nothing super exciting here. Uh, the open management infrastructure, like I said, that could provide some credentials uh, to privileged accounts. So that's very important. Um, Microsoft also recommends resetting the passwords of privileged accounts after applying the update. So that's why I included that little note there saying there's more that you need to do. Uh, and the kernel information disclosure bug, this is two months in a row where I thought a kernel info disclosure would just be random memory and it turns out it's something more. In this case, an attacker could view registry keys that they wouldn't be able to normally. Uh, we got a few bugs, most interesting ones, the, uh, sorry, a few DOS bugs, we went more than a few bugs, but, uh, you know, we got some, uh, in the DHCP server that could be a disruption, uh, and there's some cross-site scripting bugs in dynamics. And that is it. So that is our brief look at the November release for Adobe and Microsoft. Hey, I got some feedback last month and uh, it was negative, but you know what? I appreciate that because it shows me that you care enough to provide some feedback. So, hey, drop a comment if you like this, if you don't like this. I'm working on some new formats for the new year. Hopefully we'll have those implemented in time. So give me a like, give me a subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. I am legally obligated by YouTube to say that in every video. Uh, that's why we all have to say it. But until then, our next Patch Tuesday is going to be December 12th. I will be coming to you live from Dallas. Hopefully, we'll be a little bit better than last time I was live from Dallas. Not a pretty sight. Uh, but until then, stay safe, happy patching, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.